in connection with uh, the commitment campaign, we've been blessed to hear from some speakers uh, who help lead in some of our ministries, and we're going to hear from another one today. Kim Goody Metla grew up in Arlington, Texas, and has been a member of First United Methodist Church since 1984. She received a special education degree from TCU and has since earned a master's degree in social work from the University of Texas at Arlington. She is, she is married to Sereni Goody Metla, who is a local cardiologist. She's a devoted mother to her daughter, Sophie, who is 10. She's a teacher at our Children's Academy Sunday School program, uh, leading one of the Bible Black Belt classes. Kim's committed to helping those in need. She has worked tirelessly as a volunteer doing advocacy work for refugee services, volunteers weekly at our mission uh, with our homeless laundry services program, is a room in the end volunteer, and has gone three times to mission trips in Africa. She was a team member on FUMC's mission trip in 2012 to Kenya and has been a team member on two other conference-sponsored trips to Africa. Kim is truly a person shining her light as an example in this world, and I'm most pleased uh, for her to speak with us today. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Um, I have the privilege today to talk to you about our 2013 Joy of Generosity Caring for Our Community, community Stewardship Campaign. Martin Luther King Jr. so eloquently said, as long as there is poverty in the world, I can never be rich, even if I have a billion dollars. He went on to say, I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. What's so beautiful about his words is that he actually lived them, just as Jesus Christ lived his words, and he's asked us to do the same. Jesus taught us about the Good Samaritan, who had mercy on the man that was robbed and left for dead, while others turned a blind eye. Jesus commanded us to love your neighbor as you love yourself. This is the heart and the soul of the mission, the mission work that we do. This is the reason I joined this church, and this is the reason I want to raise my daughter in this church. I want to teach her that the homeless person sitting out on the bench inside our church is no different than us. Perhaps he just lost his job and he has no one to help him. I want to teach her that the man I met on the night of the homeless count is no different than us. He was 21 years old, happened to be born with a mental illness of bipolar. His family didn't understand and they kicked him out. I found him in an alley against a fence, laying down on a cold night. <coughs> I told Sophie he is no different than us. He has no family support. He has no insurance to get medication. I told her for the grace of God, there go I. However, I do have the privilege to tell her that through our First Street mission, there is a beacon of hope. Your financial contributions to the church's stewardship campaign makes it possible for our church to cover all overhead expenses of First Street mission. Because of your generosity to our church's bu budget, all donations made directly to First Street mission go to direct services, like purchasing food, infant formula, financial assistance, room at the end, and the Being Better Together campaign. Without your generosity to our stewardship campaign, First Street Mission would not be a beacon of hope for so many people in our community. Through your generosity, through your mission, together we provide infant formula through our infant formula program for infants that might otherwise go hungry. We provide shelter, a hot meal, and a clean bed for our homeless neighbors through the Room at the Inn ministry. We provide work clothes through our career closet for those who are trying to overcome adversities. We provide food for adults and children who do not know where their next meal is coming from through the food bank. 
We provide an advocate and a friend to families through our Be Being Better Together program because we all are better together. I stand here before you today and I ask you not to turn a blind eye on those Jesus has commanded us to love, the most vulnerable amongst our society. Dr. King, or repeating Dr. King's words, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? I ask, what are we doing for others in our community? Thank you. 